what is going on youtube what is going on fellow fantasy people and of course what is going on the catch fam it is your boy john you already know what time it is man we are rolling into another mock draft today i've got a uh, standard scoring format through espn with the third overall selection in an eight-man league we did get a request this past week to keep uh pumping out some eight-man league videos so that is what we are doing i do want to give a shout out to our uh, subscriber uh, champagne matt i have not forgot about forgotten about your uh, super flex mock draft that is still on the queue and coming up within a few days so just shout out to our boy champagne matt we have not forgotten about you so uh like i said standard scoring format um super stoked to get into this one trying to get out you know a little bit of variety of videos this week so uh if you do find this in any way enjoyable i do kindly ask that you go ahead and smash that like button as well as consider subscribing for more future content like this and of course let us know in the comments down below what style of mock drafts and what strategies you guys want to see to help aid you in your personal fantasy football league so let's get it going baby out uh, with standard scoring leagues you know obviously uh, you're looking for those guys who are going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns and coincidentally a lot of those same guys are going to be uh, very valuable in ppr leagues as well so uh with this third overall selection as we saw christian mccaffrey with the first pick and alvin kamara with the second i am gonna roll with that of dalvin cook uh but you guys know that I love my guy, Derrick Henry. And actually, you know what? As much as I want to pick Dalvin Cook, why not? Our Derrick Henry's my guy, right? So let's go out and get him. Uh, and and pe or excuse me, in standard scoring formats, really no reason to not target uh, that of Derrick Henry, who's going to be an absolute touchdown machine this year. No knock on Dalvin Cook whatsoever, who is also more than likely going to be a touchdown machine this year but if you guys checked out our running back ranking videos you guys know that i actually have derrick henry very very high much higher than most people and i just have a great feeling about that of derrick henry uh rb2 on the season last year in terms of fantasy so go ahead and trash me in the comments down below but that's my guy and i'm rolling with him as we saw dalvin cook uh with the fourth overall selection followed by that of saquon barkley with the fifth selection and then that of Devonte. Adams with the sixth overall selection. Devontae Adams really going to be targeted heavily in standard scoring leagues, uh, definitely in PPR leagues as well. But uh, the amount of touchdowns that we saw Devontae Adams put up last year, definitely going to be a wide receiver who's targeted. I mean, don't get me wrong. In any fantasy leagues, Devontae Adams is going to be targeted, right? We already know that. But uh, definitely going to be a huge red zone threat this coming year. So, Kind of trying to get used to uh, the ESPN format here. Uh, overall, you guys know that I primarily draft through Yahoo. So let me know in the comments down below what sites uh, you guys have been primarily using for your mock drafts and uh, you know which sites you guys want to see them conducted through uh, for this channel. As we now see Travis Kelsey selected with the seventh overall selection. With this 14th overall pick, I do want to go ahead and target another running back so we'll go ahead and only a few more selections until we pick again so should be able to go out and get a guy i mean we've got the 14th overall selection we'd love to see aaron jones fall to us we know that we already love the selection of Najee harris as well uh but antonio gibson i'm telling you in standard scoring leagues with those 11 touchdowns he put up last year definitely a very very valuable target at the rb position for this 14th overall selection so as this first round ends with the selection of Ezekiel Elliott, uh, a great pick here, you know, with pick eight, a great value. And now at the top of the first round, we've seen that of both Jonathan Taylor and Tyreek Hill off the board, followed by my guy, Nick Chubb. I mean, great value once again. So still a lot of very good players as we have uh, three more selections until we pick Aaron Jones off the board. Stefan Diggs still sitting here uh, with the 13th overall pick, a really good value. Someone who, if he's sitting here, is going to be really hard uh, to pass on considering that we have the 19th overall selection. But I do believe that uh, Antonio Gibson and Najee Harris will not fall to us with the 19th pick. And I believe we can get a very valuable receiver with that 19th overall selection. So I'm going to stick uh, with the running back heavy method here and get two guys, uh, someone to pair with that of Derrick Henry. Uh, we'll see who gets selected here. Uh, it looks like we've got some pretty competitive drafters here. So they're taking their time 
DeAndre Hopkins selected over Stefan Diggs. So uh, someone with these next couple selections is going to get an absolute steal. Part of me wants to go ahead and take Stefan Diggs and see if uh, Antonio Gibson or Najee Harris falls to us. But we're going to stick with our guns. We're going to go out and get Antonio Gibson. And we're just not going to think about it, right? Because like I said, I think we can get a very valuable uh, receiver with that 19th overall selection. But uh, you can definitely argue that Stefan Diggs is going to be more valuable than either of these running backs. Um, David Montgomery is probably going to be sitting here with this 19th overall selection. And uh, part of me wants to go ahead and take him over a receiver. So we'll kind of evaluate things uh, here as they unfold. I'd be highly surprised if either of these teams, let's see, both of them, uh, Katoon, Katone, <laughs> and Team Enlo, uh, Sorry, I'm pronouncing everything probably completely wrong there. Uh, neither of them have a receiver. Uh, you know, this guy's got the double picks. Uh, he's going out and getting DK Metcalf up. The guy I was eyeing if I was going to pick a receiver here and Stefan Diggs. I was going to say I'd be highly surprised uh, if he did not go out and get Stefan Diggs and uh, Calvin Ridley off the board. So both teams still ended up with very, very elite receivers. Um, and I can tell you, man, if Najee Harris slides here, Oh my goodness, uh, automatic selection for me uh, as he gets picked. I was going to say, that'd be absolutely insane. Uh, and I like the value of Austin Eckler here, but in the standard scoring format, he's a bit of a stay away for me. Uh, someone who, uh, you guys know, I have a little bit further back on my draft boards than most people, even in PPR scoring formats. Uh, my co-host Steven, obviously very, very high on that of Austin Eckler this year. And hey, he has great PPR value. Overall, so, so, excuse me, no knock whatsoever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my guy, David Montgomery, here. Um, but I definitely really like uh, the value of Joe Mixon here as well as Clyde Edwards-Alaire. But David Montgomery's who I have the highest conviction in. If you guys watched our running back ranking videos, you know I have him also very high, a lot higher than most people. I have him ranked 12th overall. I think he's going to have a fantastic year, a top 10 running back last year, who a lot of people seem to be sleeping on overall. So, we will see as we anticipate this 30th overall selection where we want to move to next. We see uh, the first quarterback off the board, if I'm not mistaken, Kyler Murray, and then Miles Sanders selected as well. Also, if I'm not mistaken, um, Yahoo has Kyler Murray ranked as the number one quarterback. Uh, and now we see Patrick Mahomes selected. Uh, right before that was Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, and Mike Evans. Mike Evans in a standard scoring format, you're going to see him go a lot earlier. He put up a lot of touchdowns last year. Tom Brady is very confident with him in the red zone. Adam Thielen, another great example. Uh, someone who is going to have a lot of red zone targets, presumably. Uh, someone who had a lot of touchdowns last year, both Mike Evans and Adam Thielen with 14 touchdowns last year. So in standard scoring formats, you will see them go much, much earlier than and uh, your regular PPR or half PPR league. So um, a lot of good players here. Let's go out. Uh, I like both Terry McLaurin and Justin Jefferson here, uh, but I'm going to stick uh, with uh, the Washington football team receiver and that of Terry McLaurin. Uh, as good as Justin Jefferson is, right, um, Adam Thielen is kind of the, the red zone guy there. If I'm not mistaken, uh, and it's no knock on Justin Jefferson. Uh, I mean, he had seven touchdowns last year, which are good numbers, right? Um, but I was going to say, you know, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, check out how many touchdowns Terry McLaurin had. Uh, much less than four touchdowns. So uh, maybe I made the wrong. We had a little ad there. Maybe I made the uh, wrong selection there. But, hey, I have faith in both those guys, both, just, both Justin Jefferson and Terry McLaurin. I would assume are going to have – very, very good fantasy outputs this year and great years overall. So happy with either pick to be uh, completely truthful. So uh, Josh Jacobs still sitting here, someone who you guys once again know I'm very high on. Um, but part of me is starting to slowly stray away from my love for Josh Jacobs this year. Uh, I like where he's ranked here on ESPN 29th overall. Um, my biggest concern at the moment is just how completely awful that offensive line is. And I think you get a better overall value uh, if you begin to uh, target that of Kenyon Drake in a later round. I just think overall it's a better, I mean, they've got him ranked 112th overall. Uh, but hey, like I said, uh, 
I still like Josh Jacobs a lot. It's going to be hard for me to continuously change that. As we now see, uh, Josh Jacobs selected. Justin Jefferson taken right after our selection of Scary Terry, uh, followed by Daryl Henderson Jr., as well as Allen Robinson the second. So I'm going to go out, and I'm going to get a tight end in that of Darren Waller here, and I am really liking the uh, beginning to this roster. We have three studs at the running back position. We have a great wide receiver one and a very elite tight end and that of Darren Waller as well. So we will probably now uh, move to the quarterback position and try and get one of these top tier guys, uh, a Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, really, you know, kind of that top tier still left for me. And then you kind of move to a, a very elite tier still, but kind of just a tad bit lower uh, for me, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, and Ryan Tannehill. And I would also probably uh, put in that same tier, that of Jalen Hurts and Matthew Stafford as well. But overall, um, Lamar Jackson probably our top target out of those guys as we see both Keenan Allen and Chase Edmonds off the board. Chase Edmonds, uh, someone who is a lot higher on the ESPN rankings and some other rankings. Uh, we now see a couple of picks going quick here. George Kittle, DeAndre Swift, Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, and CeeDee Lamb. So uh, once again, Lamar Jackson, our top target with this 46 overall selection. But uh, after seeing that uh, pretty, you know, I mean, hey, two picks at the quarterback position. Yeah, there goes Lamar Jackson. But I was going to say a big run on quarterbacks and truthfully, I mean, two selections at the quarterback position. Uh, is enough to kind of spark uh, that fear, right? That fear of missing out of selecting a quarterback in that top tier. And uh, unfortunately, we did uh, miss out, but that's okay. I still think we can go out and get some very valuable quarterbacks. Like I said, uh, Aaron Rodgers through Matthew Stafford, I think, still present very, very good value. Look at my boy, Tua, uh, uh, you know, highly ranked <laughs> above Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger, and Daniel Jones. So not saying too much, but a uh, little bit higher than some other rankings out there. So uh, a lot of good players uh, kind of sitting here, right? Uh, I think we can hold off at the uh, quarterback position, and we're just kind of looking for the best value. And part of me wants to go ahead and just snag uh, Mark Andrews, right? I do like uh, Tyler Lockett a lot in standard scoring formats. And Chris Godwin is probably going to be uh, the best overall value. So we're going to go ahead and take him. But uh, Tyler Lockett uh, would be another great selection there. And now we see Mark Andrews off the board as well as Tyler Lockett. And truthfully, I was hoping one of those two guys, Mark Andrews or, uh, excuse me, Tyler Lockett would kind of last. But uh, we have two very good receivers in that of Terry McLaurin and Chris Godwin on this team. Uh, Julio Jones going to be much more valuable in that of PPR scoring formats than he will be in uh standard scoring league so let's just go out and get a guy that we're confident in at the quarterback position i'm going to roll with my guy russell wilson here uh as much as i really like aaron Rodgers this year coming off of that mvp season i just think it's just such a difficult schedule i think he's going to have a fantastic year don't get me wrong and uh, if he's sitting here at pick 62 i might go out and get two quarterbacks but once again, I think some of these later guys like Jalen Hurts, Matthew Stafford, even Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence and my guy Tua, right, will probably be here pretty later on. So probably no reason to panic at the quarterback position. Um, but I will say that as much as I like Russell Wilson, I do get a little uh, – he just seems every year, no matter how good he is. I mean, we saw how good he was in the first half of fantasy last year, right? But he, it, it's either he has a drop-off or he has those games sprinkled in where he has like – 10 to 12 fantasy points and uh you know he could have put up 48 points the week before but uh in some sense i do believe as good as russell wilson is and as valuable as he is at the fantasy or as a fantasy player uh he's also a frustrating fantasy quarterback so i would like to go out and get a second quarterback as we start to look at some of these late tier running backs and i just want to hold off just a little bit before we select another one. So let's see who's available at the receiver position. Uh, Jerry Judy, probably my top selection out of those guys available. Let's check the tight ends again. I really want to, I mean, they've got Robert Tanyan ranked 106 overall. So 
we might be able to see him slide. Uh, let's just kind of evaluate. Oh, we're on the clock now as Jamar Chase was taken. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has been selected. So let's go out and let's get our guy, Jerry Judy. Uh, just a good, solid overall pick. Add some depth at the receiver position as we have two players on the same bye week, as well as our quarterback and one of our running backs uh, all on the same bye week in week nine. So uh, let's avoid week nine for the remainder of this draft or mo this mock draft. That's our next uh, strategy. Cooper Cup sitting here, I'm telling you, man, uh, probably the best value on the board. Um, and I'd be really surprised if he doesn't get selected here. If Cooper Cup is sitting here, uh, even though we're relatively, and he is sitting here, Relatively deep at the receiver position uh, in comparison to most of my mock drafts. I'm sorry, I keep itching my nose. My nose is really itchy. I don't know what's going on with me. But uh, anyways, let's go out and get Cooper Cup, who probably presents a lot more PPR value than he does, uh, you know, in, in comparison to standard scoring leagues. But overall, I, I like both these positions, uh, or excuse me, both these receivers. So you have the same bye week. So we looks like uh, we're going to have some tough uh, weeks in week nine and week 11. But um I'll say it a hundred times, uh, you know, I will forfeit a loss. If if I go out and I select all the players I have the most conviction in and a very solid fantasy roster, and they're all on uh, bye week in week 11 or week nine, as long as I got all the talent and the, like I said, the players I have the most conviction in, then I'll forfeit a loss because all that matters is that you get a, you know, a ticket to the game, right? That you get into uh, the fantasy playoffs and that you can make it to the championship. So um, don't stress out too much overall about bye weeks, but they are important to keep in mind as well. So I can tell you with the 78th overall selection, I'm actually going to go out and try and get Justin Herbert here. Uh, I'm very confident in these three running backs we have and Derrick Henry, Antonio Gibson, as well as David Montgomery. I think they're all going to finish uh, or at least have them all ranked uh, in my top 12 uh, at the running back position. So uh, you guys would definitely normally see me go very running back heavy. Um, but I just think that more uh, talent has popped up at other positions. Uh, so let's go ahead and take Justin Herbert. And I, uh, you know, as I was saying, uh, I do feel pretty confident about the running backs on this team. But since we feel confident, uh, it kind of gives us the ability to go out and possibly reach uh, for a guy that we like, like a Miles Gaskin, a Melvin Gordon III, who has an extremely, extremely easy schedule. Um, but also Ronald Jones is sitting here. I think he might slide into uh, this next round. So let's check the tight end position. Let's just go out and get Robert Tanyan. I mean, really, according to these rankings, whether we picked uh, Ronald Jones or Robert Tanyan there, uh, they were both going to be reaches. Uh, I feel very confident at the receiver position with four receivers on this squad. Uh, it would be nice to go out and maybe get a Mike Williams here. Just uh, one or two more receivers who don't have uh, by week and week 11 or uh, week nine would probably, uh, you know, for this specific roster, uh, you know, make things a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, those two selections there of Justin Herbert and Robert Tynan really help solidify this roster as a whole, as we see uh, Damian Harris and Ryan Tannehill off the board, and now the Buccaneers defense, followed by Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, but overall, I mean, we feel very confident outside of those bye weeks, right, uh, with this roster. Um, and I, you know, as we have another pick coming up and two more selections, we now see Brandon Cooks, a couple kickers, the Steelers defense, and Marquise Brown all off the board and i feel very confident we can go out and get two guys with these next two selections that we really like i am going to target that of miles gaskin and then ronald jones the second with that 99th overall selection um i mean i like i said i like mike williams sitting here but i think uh you know those two running backs would add a little bit more value and then you know we could more than likely still go out and get a receiver in one of these later rounds that uh we like with our final selection so let's just check and it's very possible that miles gaskin being the top rated running back gets selected here and we see trey sermon off the board so Kenyon drake is still sitting there as well naheem hines definitely a little bit more ppr value in that of naheem hines so let's go out and get miles gaskin add some depth to the running back position we held off quite a bit uh at the running back position which you guys know i usually don't do and i think it it may work out as we very much so solidified the rest of this roster we've got two absolute stud tight ends 
two absolute stud quarterbacks, four receivers that I'm very confident in myself. Although, I mean, I will admit that Cooper Cup, Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin, and Jerry Judy are probably going to be a little bit better values in PPR leagues as they haven't put up insane touchdown numbers. But uh, I'm confident in those four guys nonetheless, especially with the rest of this roster looking very, very solid. So we are, man, I'm really torn here. I, I'm really considering going out and uh, and taking Mike Williams here, as I do believe he is probably the best uh receiver available but there's some other good names here and some other good names spread further on so uh, i definitely see the most depth at the moment at the receiver position so let's go out and let's select ronald jones just add a little bit more depth even though he's got uh by a week of week nine uh, a little bit more depth at the running back position very happy with these two guys that we got in these later rounds and that of miles gaskin as well as ronald jones the second so i'm feeling very confident uh with this roster i do know that i mean obviously eight man roster is going to look very deep no matter what but nonetheless very happy we still see a lot of guys we like let's just go ahead and queue up uh, a couple guys that we'd want to select here. Uh, Melvin, I mean, I'm telling you, man, uh, I'm going to start saying this in every mock draft. I, I You know, in all seriousness, um, as my fantasy drafts start to come closer, a big part of my draft strategy is going to be going out and getting some of these Broncos players because they just all, at the quarterback, running back, receiver, and tight end position, the Broncos have some of the easiest overall schedules um and it's just something you cannot ignore uh, i think they're going to be very fantasy relevant as we see uh devo samuel trevor lawrence michael carter dallas goddard and trey lance all off the board very very good talent there and look at this uh our guy uh mike williams still available jalen waddle sitting here someone who's got very sneaky value a b is sitting here uh i don't know if you guys saw uh the from the day i'm recording this uh you know antonio brown uh throwing a punch in uh training or in, you know joint practice against the uh titans so um i don't know what's going to come out of that if anything at all is going to come out of it but i do believe uh, from a fantasy standpoint, that Antonio Brown presents very good PPR value, a little bit lower on him in a standard scoring format. So for whatever reason with ESPN, I, I don't know if it's, the, you know, in these mock drafts that they're just having teams select defenses way later, which is definitely far more realistic than some of the other sites that I do mock drafts through. Uh, but it tends, you know, what I tend to see is that uh, defense, very good defenses are available later on. So let's go out and get the LA Rams, who are, I think, an absolute steal here. Uh, and I know this is an eight-man league, but nonetheless, I think uh, the Rams are going to have a great season uh, from a defensive standpoint, and I think uh, a great season offensively as well. So uh, let's see which kicker we want to target, as these kickers are just going left and right, as this uh, eight-man standard scoring league through ESPN Mock Draft is coming to a close so graham gano uh is probably the best kicker i like ryan suck up a lot uh this year but oh excuse me rodrigo blankenship hiding down there that sneaky sneaky man let's add my guy rodrigo to this oh oh man my draft was complete and i skipped the the little thingy i like that thing where it shows her uh team at the end anyways Nonetheless, let's crack down this team, baby. This was a super fun uh, standard scoring eight-man league mock draft. Let's see who we ended up with, man. All right, so uh, we kind of just went through this roster relatively recently, but we'll sum it up one more time, right? So Russell Wilson, as well as Justin Herbert at the quarterback position, two guys I'm very confident in, uh, regardless of you know what scoring format you play with. Uh, we went out and we picked Derrick Henry over Dalvin Cook. Throw me some shade in the comments down below. Uh, but a guy I'm very confident in, especially in standard scoring leagues, don't get me wrong, Dalvin Cook is going to light it up regardless of what scoring format you play in this year. But I went out and I stuck to my guns and picked Derek Henry. And then we followed that up with Antonio Gibson and David Montgomery. So we have three absolute stud starters at the running back position. And to add some great depth, we went out and got Miles Gaskin and Ronald Jones the second. So feeling great overall at the running back position. Uh, at the receiver position, we have Scary Terry, Chris Godwin, Jerry Judy, and Cooper Cup, as well as my guy, Mike Williams, who kind of slid to us in the later round. So... Feeling very good at the receiver position. I will say some of these guys 
probably present better value in uh, PPR, half PPR scoring formats. But when you look at the rest of this roster, uh, these receivers are going to do just fine and help aiding us to get enough points to get victories when we look at who we have at the quarterback, running back, tight end, and even the defensive and uh, kicker positions as well. Uh, and speaking of tight end, we went out and we got Darren Waller and Robert Tanyan, man, uh, two guys who are absolute red zone targets, two uh, absolute studs at the position. So we feel very confident there as well and like i said we ended up with a great value at defense and a great kicker as well don't be sleeping on my boy rodrigo blankenship baby he's gonna have a lights out fantasy year just like he did last year and uh don't underestimate that kicker position i'm not saying go out and draft a kicker uh before your final uh, round in uh, fantasy but hey if you can get a good kicker it certainly is going to add value as well uh so with that being said uh go ahead and smash that like button if you guys did uh, find this enjoyable or entertaining on any way whatsoever as this truly truly helps out the channel and gives us that little boost in the algorithm so other uh, viewers can see this mock draft as well like i said throw a comment uh down below throw me shade if you hate that selection of derrick henry but also throw uh, any comments down below with any styles of mock drafts you guys want to see uh, what sites you guys want to see them conducted through all that good stuff and i would kindly ask that you guys please consider subscribing for more future content like this as well as mine and steven's annual the catch podcast as always i thank you all very much for watching and or listening and remember you saw it here on the catch <laughs>